Hello there. Welcome back to another episode of Walk Through the Word. You know, a few weeks ago, even last week, walk around out here, I was taking my jacket off and losing my hat because it felt like spring was coming. But I was wrong. <laughs> it's still winter. That has nothing to do with our topic today, but I thought I'd share that with you. What I want to talk to you about today is maturing getting to that point of where you're stepping out and doing the thing that God has called you to do. In the first chapter of the book of Deuteronomy, the fifth book of the Pentateuch, we find God speaking to Moses and he tells the people of Israel through Moses that it is time for you to get off of this mountain and go to the mountain that I appointed you to. He tells them it's time that you fulfill your destiny time for you to do what you were created to do. Now, as we look back over the Pentateuch, we see these five books, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and now Deuteronomy. And we see that there is a picture that God has given us of relationship. We always say how in the book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible, God shows an image of him taking the church, his people, and he calls them the bride up into heaven to be with him. Well, if you look at the Pentateuch, you see that same picture. You see in Genesis, you see God introducing himself to man. It's almost like boy meets girl, right? But in this case, it's God introducing himself to man and man coming to know God and who he is. Then in Exodus, there is this betrothal where God invites man to come out of the world, to come out of Egypt, to come out of the world of sin contained and sin controlled to become his special people. And so in Egypt, they are betrothed. And then we get into Leviticus where the law is pointed out. And what do we find there? We find the marriage between God and his people taking place where they have declared, you will be our God and we will be your people. And we see this truth paralleled in our own lives. God comes to us, he introduces himself to us. He shows us who he is. He says he is the almighty God. He shows us that it's by the blood of his, his son that we can be saved, we can have relationship with him. And then he takes us out of Egypt. He takes us out of the world system. We can become born again. We become Christians. We become something that we were not prior to our reaching this appointment with God. We become a new creation in Christ. And then we begin to grow. We begin to learn to live in the law of God. Now I know sometimes we hear that phrase, the law of God, and it sounds like a bad deal, like it's something horrible, but the law is perfect. The law is good. The law shows us how to have a relationship with God. Now what the law also tells us is that we can't do it on our own. And so we see in the book of Leviticus, the, the ceremonial law, the sacrifices, all these things pointed out and man now begins to learn how to live with God in this relationship of, of spiritual marriage. And then we get into the book of Numbers and now the marriage has happened and now man is learning to live, to walk out this relationship, establishing this relationship in the real world. How does he interact with the world around him while being governed by God? This is a wonderful and a beautiful truth that it lay hidden there. And now we come to the book of Deuteronomy and Moses, again, by the instruction of God, tells the people to look back from where they've come so they can understand where they are with the purpose of knowing how to get to where they're trying to go. We look back to understand where we are. We understand where we are with the intent of knowing where we need to go. And so this is what we find ourselves today. Now God is challenging us through this word to get off of this mountain. There is an expectancy. There's an expectancy when you and I become born again. Think about this. If the disciples had not had this expectancy put on them, what would their experience have been like? Jesus would have come. He would have given his life. He would have died. He would have rose again from the dead and the disciples would have sat down drinking coffee for the rest of eternity, telling each other how wonderful Jesus was. They'd have met every week just to remember and rehearse how, remember how we used to walk with Jesus and Jesus did this and Jesus did that. And they never would have done anything except Jesus gave them, he laid on them the spirit of expectancy. He told them to go ye therefore, teach all nations, making disciples of all men, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. He said, and lo, he said, I'll be with you, but you need to teach them everything that I've told you. There was expectancy. 
all throughout scripture, we see that when God gives us this truth, it's never for you and I just to sit back and have coffee with one another and say, gosh, you remember how cool Jesus was? No, it's that you and I can take this truth and go out into a world that's lost, walking in darkness, bound by deceit, and tell them the truth of a God who loves them. There's expectancy. God says, it's time to get off this mountain and go to the mountain I appointed to you. And that's what you and I do as we walk through the word. We learn God's truths. We get off this mountain and we take them out to a lost and to a dying world and tell everybody we can about a God who loves him. But it's kind of cold, so let's walk a little bit more. We'll warm up and we'll talk some more as we continue to walk through the word. Come on with me. You know, we talked about this spirit of expectancy. If you think about it, back in the third chapter of, of Exodus, when God first begins to talk to Moses about this great deliverance, he doesn't just say to them, hey, I'm God and I'm gonna take you out of Egypt. He says, I'm gonna take you out of Egypt and I'm gonna take you into the promised land. He says, this land is not only different than where we are now, but it's a land of promise. It flows with milk and honey. So there are some things there that are implied. One of those things that's implied is that we're gonna go through the desert. We're not gonna stop in the desert. We're gonna come out of Egypt and we're gonna come out of this bondage of, of slavery that you have known, but I'm not gonna leave you there. So many of you have become Christians, but you've come out of Egypt and you're just existing in the desert. You're just living in the desert lands of the world. You're, you're not walking in righteousness. You are walk, not walking in the victory that the cross promises you, you're just in the desert. But God didn't say he's going to leave you in the desert. He said, I'm going to take you into the promised land. So we have the promise of God holding us there to bring us out of bondage, but then to take us in to victory. Can you see the beauty of that? And now we come to the border of the promised land. And so many of us, like the nation of Israel, instead of growing up, instead of possessing the promise that God has in store for us, we walk around it. Some of you have been walking around your promise for 30, 40 years. You've been walking around the promise that God has for you. The promise of victory in your marriage, the promise of victory in yourself, the promise of victory in your own heart and mind. You're still seeing yourself as that slave back in Egypt, still seeing yourself as that slave back in alcoholism or drug use or, or, or illicit sexual behaviors. You're still seeing yourself living the way the world had you when you were in bondage. And God is saying, it's time to come out of the wilderness, time to go into the promised land. And now we have to take that step of faith going in. Now, one of the things that impresses me about this is that everybody knew that this was going to be a military campaign that the nation of Israel was having to go into the promised land and dispossess the inhabitants. We talked some time ago about how important it is for you to get the inhabitants of your old life out. You can't have the same old habits. Sometimes you can even have the same old friends. Sometimes you need to move literally from one location to another, but you need to get the old out so that the new can be possessing uh, of, of this promise that God has given you. Now, once this happens, uh, the, the nation of Israel is waiting to go in, but Moses doesn't sit down with them and come up with a war plan. He doesn't talk to them about how to get the, the armies of Israel on the borders and into this land. What he tells them and what I'm telling you this, 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 this fine day is that remember the promise of God. Remember the covenant that God has made with you. The covenant that he made through the shed blood of his son, Jesus Christ. When he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. When he said that I have you in the palm of my hand and no man can pluck you out. When he says it is for this reason that I came, Jesus says, it's for this reason that I was manifest, that I might destroy the works of the devil. So now that we have this promise, is there any reason why you or why I don't go in and possess the great and precious promise of the Lord? Who can deny God? Who can separate us from God? Can death, can peril, can sword, can sickness? No, none of those things can separate us from God. They make the journey interesting, but they can't defeat us. The only thing that can take you and me out of this is when you and I fail 
to infuse our steps in faith when we refuse to do what God has called us to do because of fear, unbelief, and disobedience. It's time for us to possess the land. It's time for us to be the witnesses that God has called us to be. You and I, to go ye therefore, to teach all nations, to tell them who Jesus is, to tell them what Jesus has done for you. Because I can't tell your story, but you can. You can tell them how Jesus found you and how he lifted you up and put you on a solid place. You can tell them how Jesus gave you hope when there was no hope. You can tell them how Jesus came as light in your darkness. Because I can tell you, I remember when I walked in bondage, bondage to the flesh, bondage to the mind, and I thought there was no victory for me. There was no way for me to get out. I had tried everything. I tried to talk and, and shimmy my way through things. But one day it came to me that if I'm going to be free, I'm going to have to do things God's way. And I had to confess with my mouth the sin that I had committed. I had to confess to my wife, to my pastor, to my friend. I had to confess to the people in my life that I had sinned and I had come short of the glory of God. And I had to ask the necessary people in my life for forgiveness. Some I couldn't ask. They were gone. I had to just leave that with God. But I had to do things God's way. And when I bowed before God in repentance and humility, he did exactly what he said he would. He laid his hands on me and raised me up a son. He breathed on me the life of the Holy Spirit. He said, now go do what I told you to do. And since that time, I have been trying to tell everyone I can, well, as much as I can, that Jesus is Lord and that you too can share this victory if you'll just come to him, get off that mountain and come walk with him in life. I invite you now to join me on this journey, this thrilling journey of life as we continue to walk in the word. And you know what? The good shepherd, Jesus the great one, will always be with us. He promised he would. Hey, so until next time, remember, walk in the word. Stay with Jesus because he'll never leave you. If you have a comment for me, leave it there at the bottom of the page in the comment section. I'd love to hear from you and talk back to you. If you got something that's more personal or private or a prayer request, you can put that on the email on walkthroughtheword at gmail.com. Remember also to like this page, subscribe to it, and then share it with your friends. Help me to get this word about how good Jesus is out to the world around us. We take for granted that people know they don't know. They need you and I to tell them about a Jesus who loves them so much that he left his home in heaven, came here as a man, lived a perfect life, died on a cross that you and I deserve because of the sin that we are, that he rose again, and now he's offering us the chance to share with him eternal life. He said in the gospel, what is eternal life? That you could know the Father, and you could know the Son, Jesus Christ. So as I'm walking in the Word, why don't you come walk with me? And remember, if you ask him, Jesus will let you come along with him and you can walk with him for all eternity. So until next time, the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. Me? Well, I'm gonna go walk through the word. Until next time, bye-bye.